I'm Kelsey with White Cottage Boutique here today with another tutorial in our step-by-step -step video series on how to refinish furniture like a pro. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about how to distress your furniture. There's a couple different techniques you can use. I'm going to show you my favorite techniques and ones you probably haven't seen before. Um, so the first step we're going to actually do with this piece of furniture, and I'm actually doing this on just the door for this video, but I am going to do it on the entire piece. Um, before we move on. So what I want to do is I want to make this wood look like it was aged before it was even touched. Now this is an older piece of furniture so it does have some natural distressing in it um, where it's been you know kicked or nicked uh, just during its lifetime but we want to add a little bit more to that and we want to add a little bit of the um, the outside barn wood aged look to it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to make some distressing tools that are really handy to make them. Uh, one of them is a chain. I, I'm sure you've heard a lot of people talking about distressing furniture with a chain, but I like to take it one step further. Um, in addition to the chain, I have some uh, nuts and bolts uh, that have been kind of strung through the links in the chain. These will create a lot nicer dings than the chain. The chain itself kind of just makes really smooth dents. I want more of like a, a, a real mark, something like a hammer would do, but I don't want it to be as intense as a hammer. Um, so I take this, and what I do is I just get a little bit of a grip on it, and you're just gonna kinda hit a word, just like that. In a few places, I usually do this fairly light. I don't go really intense. Because these are gonna be your bigger marks than the, the remaining pieces. So, okay. Done that. Pretty self-explanatory. I don't really feel like I need to unscrew the bolts and show you how to screw bolts, so I'm not going to. The next one is this cool little medieval looking tool uh, that is actually handmade, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how we make these because they're really, really simple. Um, all this is is it's a wood furniture leg that I bought up in Depot for like $8 so that I could have something to swing with. You could really use like an old bat, anything that you can attach this to that is gonna be easy to swing because what you're gonna do with this is you're gonna hit it like this. Um, so then I've also got a piece of scrap wood. This is a piece of, I think it's an inch by six inches that I just found in our yard. It's just a piece of scrap wood. Um, and then screws. Want to use screws, not nails, because the nails you can, if you're sitting and hitting them like this, they come out really easy. Uh, so screws are going to last longer. What I've done is I've screwed the screws through the back. I'm going to show you up close here. You can see that. There we go. All right. So I've got these screws that have just been screwed in straight through the board in kind of a random pattern. What I do to make the pattern is I just take an, a pen, and this time it was orange, you can kind of see some of it, and I just dot it really randomly, and I kind of do that across the whole thing, um, focusing on the corners because that's usually what I hit with. I don't usually take the whole thing and just slam it down, um, but I sometimes do, so I like to cover a little bit in the middle as well. So, then, once I had this done, I just attached it with a screw to this leg so that I had something to swing it with. Um, and this one is really my favorite tool because it creates the, the little wormholes that you see uh, when, when you look at professionally distressed, I guess, furniture. Um, and you want to be somewhat careful with this because you can get carried away really quickly. So. You want to just go really light. I like to take kind of a corner of this and hit just an area. And you want it to make holes. So don't go, if you go too light, you're never going to see it after the paint goes on. So just kind of hammer it in here. All right. And one thing that I feel like people miss when they're doing this is you have this groove in here. Make sure not to miss that with your tools because it will look funny that it has no distress marks in it at all. All right. I'm only going to do the back a little bit. I don't like to distress the back too 
too much because you don't really see much of a point in it. No one's really going to look at it too much. So I'm mostly focusing on the front. So we've got the second of our three tools down. And the last one is the most difficult, I think, at least for me. This is just a chisel. Um, I just bought it from Home Depot, but what you use this for is to create like splits in the wood. So it looks like the wood has naturally split over time, but you're not going to do it. Um, and you're not going to actually make the whole piece of wood split. Uh, so I'm going to show you how we do this. I'm going to bring you a little bit closer. So you've got your board. And you want to pick somewhere that looks like it would naturally split. So in this piece, hold it up again. Down here, the wood runs this way, the grain runs this way, and then the grain runs this way on the side and up and down on the side. So you always want to be going with the grain when you do this. So what I'm going to do, and always start on an end, so it wouldn't make sense for me to make a mark like this if that's pretty much what I'm seeing. Since the grain goes this way, the mark needs to be like this. And I'm going to start with... I'm going to start with the mark up in this corner right here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take our blade and make a straight line. And you're going to find your blade's going to want to kind of go with the way the natural wood would go. But we're just going to kind of start marking it out. And it should be deeper towards the end than it should be towards the front. So what I'll do is kind of focus on the end and kind of lighten up a little bit as I bring it in. And be extremely careful while you're doing this. These are sharp. not pushing very hard. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm really pushing light because you don't need really to, especially with a wood like this that's fairly soft. So you can see this marking here. That's what we just did. And so that will look like a cool little crack or a, like split in the wood when we go and glaze it. So I'm going to do that a couple times. I'm going to do kind of a longer one right here. There's my deeper one, but I want it. To, I want it to look natural. So since this one's so big, I'm actually going to put a little tiny one right next to it. And you can see this takes the most amount of time out of everything we do. But I really don't do this a lot on the actual piece. I mostly just do it on the doors and maybe a, little, a couple corners. So there's two, and I think I'm going to add one going this way, just to kind of show you how we do it. You want to try not to look super symmetrical when you do it, because it won't look as good. All right. So, I'll show you. There you go. If you can see that, I hope you can. Okay. So, you can see this one, how I stopped right here and stopped right here and let it go into the grain this way instead of working this way. That's what I mean with going towards the grain. You don't want to have it going opposite of the grain, it won't look natural. So, you can kind of see the distressing marks. Try to show a little bit of a different angle. So you can see how much we've done here. You'll be able to see a lot of it when we get the glaze on. Um, but yeah, so that's what we do to distress. I'm gonna go. Okay, so we're done distressing our door. Um, this is one distressing technique. Another one is to sand down the paint around the edges of your piece of furniture to make it look like the paint's kind of worn away. 
And that's another technique that we're also going to be doing on this door. So we're getting all these, all these fun techniques into this one furniture project, which is awesome. Um, but this is uh, my, one of my favorite ways to distress furniture. I think it adds a really unique touch. I'm going to show you another, um, another piece that this effect has been done on. Uh, so you can see kind of what the final effect is intended to look like.